Welcome to Digital Learning, an initiative of Directorate of Collegiate Education, Government of Karnataka. The Liar, a short story by Mulkraj Anand, is prescribed for third semester BCom General English affiliated to Bangalore North University. The previous sessions, introduction to the lesson, introduction to the author and uh, the even the story in detail has been discussed. So here in this session, the focus will be on the plot of the story, the exposition, rising action, climax and falling action and resolution according to the story here. I am Nandana NG, Assistant Professor of English, Government First Grade College, Bagepalli. The Liar, a short story by Mulkraj Anand. In this session, the focus will be on the uh, elements of the plot that is exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution. Contents of the session, we will as always, we will always have a recapitulation of the previous knowledge so that we will assess as to what is it that we have learned from the previous session and how it will serve as a bridge for further learning in the next session. Learning objectives of this particular PPT of such session outcome that the student can expect at the end of this session. The lesson, the liar is continued now here in the course of unit 2. And finally, we will also have a recapitulation followed by multiple choice questions to assess yourself. Recap of the previous knowledge. By now, the student will be familiar with the story The Liar written by Mulkraj Anand. The Liar is a short story, a very prominent short story written by Mulkraj Anand. The prominent character of this story is Labu. Labu is a thin a oh, middle-aged man and he is an old shikari of the village. By now we are familiar with the term shikari is a person who engages in hunting and in this story or during this time frame we can see that shikari services were engaged by the Britishers or the British subedars who went for hunting. She, Labu was one of the oldest shikari in the village. He had a lot of knowledge about the uh, hunting techniques tactics and the places to visit and he could uh, find animals for hunting very easily. As a result, Labu was always included in all the shikaris or in all the hunting sessions whenever the subedars went out of the village. Though Labu is a born liar, he is also a good storyteller. So, we are familiar by now that Labu and liar both are synonymous with each other. Anand, the boy, the young boy, he is none other than Mulkraj Anand himself. Anand as a young boy, he is narrating the story which happened during his boyhood. boyhood. In fact, he is recollecting the story. He admits that he learned to create cock and bull stories from Labu. So, Labu has been a negative influence also on him. In fact, he has taught Anand how to lie, how to get out of difficult situation by helping him to create cock and bull stories. He did not believe the stories of Devil Ram. In one incident, though Anand was fascinated by all the stories narrated by Labu, yet that particular story of the Devil, Devil Ram, the apparition of Devil Ram, how it appeared in front of Labu, the description by Labu, somehow did not go well with Anand, the young boy. He says he did not believe his stories or the story of the apparition told by Labu. In that story, we have the Devil Ram which appeared at Devi Parbat and according to him he describes uh, the devil ram. Let me just uh, quote from the text here. He says, uh, I swear by God Almighty, here I am reading uh, Labu's uh, paragraph. It is true, the Subedar will tell you that he saw this terrible apparition with me. It was a beast about the size of an elephant with eyes as big as hen's eggs and a beard as long as that of Maulvi Shadin, the priest of the mosque. Not only henna dyed and red, but blue black. It had huge ears as big as an elephant's which did not flap, however, but pricked up like the ears of the Subedars. It had a nose like that of the wife of the missionary sahib and it had square jaws which showed teeth almost as big as the chunks of marble which lie outside the temple as it laughed at the Subedar. It appeared unexpectedly near the peak of Devi Parbat. 
the subedar and i had ascended ascended about 12000 feet up the mountain in search of game when suddenly out of the spirit world that always waits about us in the living room there was the clattering of stones and boulders the whistling of sharp winds the gurgling of thunder and a huge crack on the side of the mountain then an enormous figure seemed to rise from a distance it seemed to both of us like a dark patch and we thought it was an uriel and began to stalk towards it what was our surprise however when as soon as we saw it stand there facing us with its glistening white eyes as hen's egg it sneezed and ripped the mountain side with a kick of its four feet and disappeared the mountain shook and the subedar trembled while i stood bravely where i was and laughed till i wept with joy at my good luck in having seen so marvelous a manifestation of the devil god of the tribe of rams i tell you son please god i shall show him to you one of these days this is exactly how lavu narrated the story of apparition or the devil god ram that appeared at devi parbatta but then uh, our listener that is anand master uh, master anand there the young boy did not listen to him in fact in the story lavu says that he stood bravely while the others trembled now what is the what are the learning objectives of this session the uh, learning objectives of this session it will help to motivate the students in creative writing in turn it will help to mold one's characters the major moral of this story would be not to lie unnecessarily or we will get trapped in within our own lies labu the character is a born liar he has told so many lies that he has lost count of the lies that he has told in his lifetime uh, maybe if he was truthful enough he would have retained the respect of the young boy anand but due to his lying nature even the young boy anand starts doubting him and he is called a liar by the young boy so somewhere this story teaches the students not to lie unnecessarily it will also help the student to expose himself to the style of writing stories in fact in this story the entire story is narrated from the point of view of the young boy this is the autobiographical story and mulkraj anand is re reminiscing this story which he recollects from his childhood so there are various ways in which the story can be nar- narrated this is more like a nostalgic aspect here this also will develop interest for storytelling it will help develop the imaginative power of the students and also help develop interest for story reading story reading will help the student to read further and uh, have a vast exposure to all the types of narration it will also help to familiarize the students with the art of storytelling at the end of the session the students will be able to read understand and appreciate the content of the text it will also help the student to recognize the elements of the story it will also help the student to develop the art of storytelling coming to the elements of the story the student will be able to recognize the exposition rising action the climax and the resolution as it happens it is nothing but like how in a graph there is a rise a peak and then a fall down likewise in every story there is a rise there is a fall down there is a climax and there is a resolution it will also help to develop the art of storytelling the student also will be able to write creative short stories on his own inspired by such stories and it will also further encourage the students to develop interest for folklore uh we are going to continue the story layer here wherein we had stopped at the point in the previous session wherein the narrator master anand had argued with labu about false stories yes he liked labu he liked to listen to his stories he liked labu when he taught him how to lie in fact labu was uh, instrumental in teaching master anand to lie there how to get out of difficult situation at one point uh master anand also admits that labu had taught him how to look out for signs to uh, fire, uh, indicate an approaching animal or how to find out an animal from the footprints etc those things he appreciates labu for but then somehow a few of the stories by labu were so false that even the young boy anand did not like it so when uh, uh, after the end of the story devil ram after the narration of the devil ram story by labu 
uh, when the, the boy says that he did not believe him, Labu was hurt. Somewhere maybe uh, he reacted as an elder, adult. Maybe he felt that, how is it that the entire village listens to my stories? They don't doubt me and this young boy is doubting me. Somehow that hurt Labu, he frowned and he de denied or he declined to tell more stories. He was hurt that the young boy who was uh, in awe of him, who used to admire him, did not trust him anymore. And that hurt his ego and he frowned and he declined to tell more stories. And uh, as they both stopped talking, there was a gap in the relationship. There was a sort of a break in the relationship due to this friction. In the meanwhile, <clears throat> Labu went to Nepal with Kuldeep Singh for Shikar. So, this time Kuldeep Singh, the Subedar, in a, had accompanied or he had requested or in fact more, more like instructed Labu to accompany him for Shikar to Nepal. There was a long gap, more than 6 months elapsed and the young boy did not see Labu. In the meanwhile, for Master Anand, all his anger at Labu seemed to have disappeared with the passing of time and it, uh, he, in fact his anxiety started to increase because he observed that in the absence of Labu, village people talked about his incapability to hunt. Now the young boy was confused. How is it that when Labu was there in the village and whenever he was uh, to be seen, all the villagers respected him, they listened to his stories. But now that he is not to be seen in the village and in his absence, the village people talked about his incapability to hunt. It was as if he was a liar and all that Labu told was a lie and he could not even do the basics of hunting. They declared, they as in the village people declared him as a boaster and a liar. Boaster is a person who exaggerates things and a liar is a person who lies. Yes, through the course of the story, we are familiar that uh, Bo, Labu does both. He boasts. In fact, what maybe a part of it might have happened, but he exaggerates it to such a great extent that he is seen as a vain boaster and also a terrific liar. But after a gap of more than six months, Throughout the course, you can see that the village people had been very negative about Labu. But somewhere listening to all this negative uh, uh, feedback of the villagers, the young boy was somewhere hurt. He, wa he was fuming. Somewhere he wanted to give it back to Labu by asking, See, you were angry with me when I did not listen to your story, but then the entire village does not believe you. How can you justify this? He wanted to hurt him back for hurting him. But when Labu came back, after a long back, he seemed ill and he limped. When uh, the young boy saw his hero, Labu, ill and limping, somewhere all the anger of the young boy vanished and he was more curious as to what happened to Labu. The narrator was waiting eagerly for his return. After his return, Labu was limping and he looked sick. And somewhere the young boy was very hurt when he saw his uh, demigod or his hero uh, looking uh, so sad. The narrator wanted to know more about the incompetencies of Labu. But then look at the innocence of the boy. He thought he is going to uh, going to Labu. He will go up to him and will ask him, see this is how the villagers are talking about you. What do you have to say about that? He never knew when he saw Labu, all those things he would forget and he would be mesmerized by his false stories once again. But then after some time, uh, the boy thought, let me go and speak to him. So, when he went in search of him, he saw him, but then there seems to be a change in his character. Labu seems to be very quiet since his return and he was mostly confined to his hut and he walked with a limp. Something had happened and the boy was very curious. The narrator that is Master Anand forgot his misunderstanding. He forgot as to why he was angry with Labu. Now the curiosity, the curiosity aspect was more. He now wanted to know as to what happened to Labu. The narrator had developed a kinship with him. Yes, uh, this kinship was based on many years of interaction and the young boy had more of affection for Labu than he realized and uh, all his anger uh, evaporated and now he was more interested in finding out as to what happened to him. Children are like that, their anger never stays for a long time. So the narrator approached him at his old hut. So the narrator went in search of him and he approached him at his old hut where Labu was lying. And one thing we have to appreciate here, when the young boy went to the hut to speak to Labu, Labu did not hold any grievance against the young boy either. He too spoke to him in the usual manner as if nothing had happened. This is something to be appreciated. As an adult, he could have reproached the boy saying that, you did not believe me when I told you the story, now why have you come back? As the young boy innocently approached him, 
Labu also spoke to him without holding any grudge against the boy for not trusting him. But then Labu was ready to create a new story forgetting their past quarrels. Let us try to recapitulate what is it that we have learned through the course of this story. The narrator had argued with Labu about false stories. We know which story in particular in the story of the devil ram. When uh, Labu had narrated the story of the devil ram, the boy was not taken in. In fact, he said that it was false and that had hurt the sentiments of Labu and he had frowned and as he was hurt by the young boy not believing him, he had denied to tell more stories. A sort of friction had occurred occurred between the relationship of both and the young boy Anand had returned home fuming never ever going to uh, and he had thought he is never ever going to speak to Labu again. And within a gap of two or three days Labu also had gone to Nepal along with Kuldeep Singh for another shikar. Now here we can see that break in relationship also led to a lack of communication. In the absence of Labu, the village people talked about his inca incapacity or about his incompetencies and how La Labu was a liar, he was just a boaster, all he did was talk and he could not do anything, all these things. Even the ma narrator, young boy Anand's father also talked negatively about Labu and somewhere that hurt the young boy. He wanted to speak to Labu directly and find out whether there was an element of truth in it. But when Labu returned after a gap of more than six months, there seemed to be a change in his character. Uh, looking at Labu, his hero, so fallen down, sick, limp and limping and ill, that somehow hurt our narrator. Our narrator forgot all that uh, had happened between him and Labu and out of curiosity, he approached him at his old hut. Uh, we should also appreciate Labu for not holding any grievance or grudge against the young boy and he too spoke to the narrator with the previous affection that he had. But then this time he was ready with a new story. He forgot their past quarrels or maybe we can also take it this way that Labu was once a liar, always a liar. He forgot that because of his false stories, the young boy had stopped talking to him. Now, when the boy had approached him once again, he was again encouraged to narrate one more false story. Let us test ourselves what we have learned through the course of this session. The narrator dash Labu, the options available are accepted, appreciated, criticized, believed and the answer is option C, the narrator and who is the narrator here? The young boy Anand, he criticized Labu for his false story, particularly his devil ram story. So, the answer here is criticized that is comment in a negative manner. Next question. Where did Labu go? After the break in Labu and Anand's relationship, where did Labu go? Options are to learn more parts, to on a world tour in search of devil ram or hunting trip to Nepal. So, the answer is option D hunting trip to Nepal. Labu went with Kuldeep Singh on a hunting trip to Nepal. Who is Kuldeep Singh? The options are he is son of Subedar, a foreigner, devil hunter and a storyteller. The answer is Kuldeep Singh was the son of Subedar Dilip Singh. Next question, villagers commented upon Labu as dash, knowledgeable, incompetent, great hunter of the village or man with pass. In fact, in Labu's absence, the villagers commented or criticized upon Labu as option B, incompetent. Incompetent means somebody who does not, do not, does not have the competency or who is not competent enough to do things. So, here in this context, the answer is villagers commented Labu as incompetent. The last question. How was Labu after coming back from the trip or how did Labu look after coming back from the trip? Grim and painful, energetic, enthusiastic or joyful. When uh, the young narrator Anand goes to visit Labu after he came back from the trip, 
how did labu appear he appeared the option a is the answer here grim and painful so the sources and references used for this session thank you